Hello students, this is a brief introduction to the Church's teaching on the Holy Eucharist, the source and summit of Christian life. Now before I go into the Church's teaching and doctrine on the Eucharist, I think it's important to say where is, uh, where is this coming from? And a lot of the Church's teaching on the Eucharist uh, gets defined and codified at the Council of Trent, which is the longest running council in the history of the Church. It went from 1545 to 1563. It met on and off under three different popes, and it was this huge effort by the Catholic Church to counteract the Protestant Reformation. And so it had a couple of tasks before it. The first task was theological, and its job was to clarify the Church's teaching in light of what the Protestants were saying. So, where they were right, they acknowledged it, and where they were wrong, they said, nope, this is what we actually believe, this is actually our tradition, and this is what we're sticking to. Okay. So that was number one, the theological project. Um, and that really encompasses the first and second goal here, not just to refute the Protestants and then to say what Catholics actually believed. The, the other big uh, pillar of this was the reform of the church, because a lot of Protestants very rightly said, oh, there's a lot of corruption going on, uh, financial corruption, sexual corruption, and a lot of the bishops knew it, and they said, all right, we have finally got to clean up our act. Other popes, other councils had made an attempt, and it just never got anywhere. And so Trent said, all right, we're going to do this in earnest. So every time Trent met, what it would do, it would tackle one theological topic, it would uh, refute the Protestants, it would clarify what the church taught, and then it would switch gears and it would then talk about some kind of uh, moral reform that it was going to enact. Did lots of, lots of things, uh, including invent, the, uh, invent seminaries so that we could have educated priests, because un uneducated, untrained priests were causing lots of problems. So the Council of Trent is where we're going to be getting the, the primary understanding of the Church's teaching on the Eucharist. Now, of course, we're going to go back and look at where this comes from Scripture, because the Council is going to look at Scripture, but it's, you know, this is the one that puts it in the, in the doctrinal language. And I'm going to give you now a couple definitions about the Eucharist or topics related to it. And the definitions are so important, because definition comes from uh, Latin words uh, de, which means from, and uh, fin, which means the end or border of something. And so a definition is something that gives you an outline. Does it give you the whole picture the, or the, the whole reality? No. But a definition gives you an outline saying, okay, within this, within this kind of frame or, or picture, that's where you can fill in the details and that's where the reality is. In this sense, a definition is like a silhouette. It gives you the outline of something, but it leaves the inner reality as something of a mystery that you need to explore. So we have the silhouette, of a graduate, but the reality of becoming a graduate is something that you're learning about. So you, you look at the silhouette and you think, what's the reality? Graduate. What does that mean? Well, you have to fill in, fill in the reality. Or take this picture. Donkey! That's the reality. So what is the Eucharist? The Eucharist, which this definition you need to write down, the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ present under the appearances of bread and wine. And it's very similar to another definition that's closely related to Eucharist, but not the same thing, and that's the definition of real presence. Okay. So when we talk about the real presence, what are we saying? We're saying that the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus are really, truly, and substantially present in the Eucharist, and not merely symbolically. And each of those adjectives, really, truly, substantially, is meant to counteract another false idea, a false idea that comes up at the Protestant Reformation, and the Council of Trent uses these adjectives precisely to counteract the Protestants and clarify what the Church has always believed, but it wants to articulate it in a new way. So the real presence talks about how is Jesus present in the Eucharist. And the Eucharist is this uh, thing, this, this appearance of bread and wine that contains within it the full presence of Jesus Christ. Now when we talk about the Eucharist, um, traditionally in, in Catholic sacramental, theolo sacramental theology, following the teaching of St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, we talk about matter and form. And so the matter would be sort of like the stuff and the form tells you, well, what does the stuff mean? What, is, what do the various symbols mean? Um, because one symbol, uh, one outward symbol can have many different interpretations. You know, if you pour water on someone, 
Well, there could be different interpretations of that. It could be a woman throwing water on a man's face because she's been insulted. Or it could be it's a hot day and someone's trying to cool you down. Or it's a prank. Or, you know, you've just won a big football game and the players are dumping the ice water on the coach. Whatever. So the matter of the Eucharist is wheat bread, grape wine. That's the stuff. you got to have the stuff. And the form, what makes this particular wheat bread and this particular grape wine the Eucharist? What makes it different than any other sort of bread? The prayer. The Eucharistic prayer of the priest when he says, this is my body, this is my blood. That's what makes the Eucharist the Eucharist. Now when we talk about the real presence, again we have to ask, in, in this definition, the Council of Trent is going to be looking at what the Protestant reformers are saying. Now interestingly, Martin Luther, the who is regarded as the father of the Protestant Reformation, actually believed in the real presence. But his uh, fellow protester, John Calvin, did not. So there are, there are some real differences within the Protestant uh, view of the Eucharist. They're not all the same, not, not by a long shot. So let's just look at a few of the key differences. Where did really, truly, and substantially come from? Now each of these three adjectives, they're going to be kind of closely related one uh, to another, but each one is chosen to, to counteract some other idea. So really is chosen to counteract the idea of figurative, um, that, that it's a, uh, a, a figure, um, it's a particular sort of symbol. This is Ocalampadius's idea. And the Council of Trent said, no, it's, it's really Jesus's body. It's not a figure of it. You might think of like a figurine. Uh, you know, like a G.I. Joe or something like that that symbolizes. And, and Trent said, no, no, it really is his body. It's not like, you know, doll or something like that. No, this really is him. And then there was Zwingli, another one of the Protestant reformers. And, and Zwingli said that the Eucharist signifies Christ's body. So signify means it's, it's a sign of it. it. It points to a reality, just like a stop sign tells you stop. Uh, the Eucharist signifies or points to uh, Christ's body, which is now gloriously reigning in heaven. And Trent said, no, it doesn't just point to it. It truly is. It truly is it. It embodies that, that reality. And finally, there was substantially. And Trent chose this to counteract the teaching of John Calvin. And John Calvin said that Christ is present in virtue or in power, we might say. So, in other words, Jesus is present in the sacrament. Why? Because he is, um, the Eucharist really does stuff for us. It makes us holy, you know. It, it forgives venial sins. And, and so, Christ is really there by his power. And Trent said, well, not just that. That, yes, Jesus' power is really, yeah, it's a powerful sacrament. A lot of power there. But it's also there in substance, that when you ask, what is that? The correct answer is, body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. That's what it is. That's what substance refers to. What is that stuff? And Trent said, that stuff is Jesus the Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity. So that is a basic introduction to the church's definition of the Eucharist. And we'll look at more in class why that is the case and the significance of these, of these differences.